On the 30th of September 1999 came one of the most era-defining strategy games of the PC gaming world. A game that is personally so close to my heart as being the second game I ever played on PC, with the initial title in the franchise being the first. But how has it lasted? But most importantly, is Age of Empires 2 still worth it 18 years on? As a disclaimer, the HD edition will be included at points as well in this because it's pretty much one of the only and probably the best way to play the game at the moment. The single player for Age of Empires has always been charming, having its own unique style than many other games with instead a long continuous storyline, there are a number of different scenarios the player can act out and then some longer campaigns in there as well. In truth, character development and things you would expect from a modern day single player game are pretty much not there in a massive way, but that's not how it's supposed to be. That's what gives a single player its charm. The fact that it's different. The way it plays and keeps players interested with ever changing missions you can play. A lot of it shows off the mechanics of the game in a massive way to the full extent and never ceases to keep the player entertained throughout. The campaign you play are more or less based on historical conflicts, yet of course there is some artistic license that's been included just to keep it going and entertaining. All in all, the single player aspect of Age of Empires 2 is just an array of different notable figures and scenarios from history that you can play out in different and interesting ways. But how does the game still play to this day? The gameplay for Age of Empires 2 is incredible. It's pretty much the same in the HD edition as well. It's really the thing that keeps people coming back for more whenever they have that RTS itch. Age of Empires 2 has you covered. Of course there's the normal RTS mechanics like gathering resources, wood and food that are important for your early game with stone then becoming necessity for buildings and finally the need for gold gathering enters as upgrading troops, researching and training special units is a necessity in the game later on when going up against the AI and players alike. In regards to AI, it was definitely improved somewhat in the HD edition of the game, turning the AI into mean killing machines and although at the lower difficulties not being a massive threat, cranking up the AI really puts your speed and efficiency to the test. I have to admit, one of the problems I do have with the gameplay of Age of Empires 2 is the faction system. Each civilization or faction you choose, each has their own individual unique units and special abilities. For example, the Huns don't need to build houses early game, as they have a higher population start. They also get the unique horse archer unit, whilst a personal favourite of mine is the Viking faction with their powerful infantry and pretty much overkill elite longships that can destroy pretty much anything thrown at them. Although there is an attempt at variation between the factions, I still feel they are a little too samey. It's not a massive issue and doesn't take me away from the game, but there could be more differences between the civilizations you are playing as I think. For example, more variations in the different building types and also the look of the villagers or soldiers, as for most of the civilizations, the base soldier and villagers are pretty much the same in terms of appearance. Under the same surface of each civ, there is a number of different abilities though that they all get. But as it's not obvious from the start, only more veteran or experienced players will know the exact faction to pick for the exact playstyle. This can be advantageous to some people, but less to others. Another thing that I think Age of Empires 2 missed out on is the addition for in-depth formations with their soldiers. Yes, it includes the basic block, split and spread formations and so on, but even with these, as soon as soldiers start to brawl, any cohesion is pretty much lost. I feel like it didn't take away from the gameplay too much though, and maybe it's actually what gives Age of Empires the feel we all know and love. But it's a side note to think about. Trying to find out the balance of macro and micro managing is a big part of Age of Empires 2. The game seems to turn towards more of the micromanaging, with making sure all your villagers are doing something and that they haven't run out of stone or gold to collect for example, or even make sure your windmill is completely stacked, otherwise you'll have men and women standing around doing pretty much nothing. Of course, this is a game released in the late 90s, so many gameplay elements we would expect today 
would not be included in the game of this time. Yet some sort of system where the idle villagers will get to work on another task right away after they finished their initial job would be a great and welcome addition. This isn't something too far-fetched though. As for building, if a villager finishes one construction, they'll go onto a nearby site that's already being built. So I don't think it was an impossible thing for them to add in, but I guess they just missed out on that one. Of course, that's just my opinion on what I think about improvement of the game. The game shows its age to this day, with some outdated controls and settings, with the inability to set resolutions for your game and change any of the actual UI. This wasn't even improved in the HD edition. The HD edition did try and add more graphics in and try and define the graphics a little bit. It just looks a little bit sharper. I wouldn't call it a HD version of the game as it is so titled, but of course they have sharpened it up a little bit. Talking and going back to the resolution though, it has caused countless problems with some people in the past and from personal experience trying to play with my friends higher resolution gaming laptop screen, they're having text and units that are so small it's unplayable. And with the inability to actually change these resolution settings, the game runs into a massive issue. Another smaller way that the game shows its age is to do with audio quality. Of course a lot less noticeable than the visual or gameplay elements, but you can still tell the leaps and bounds game developers have actually come in terms of their sound design to this day. Age of Empires 2 is a very replayable game though, and I would tie this solely to the HD edition, as the multiplayer updates and content is much more apparent on this newer version. I have to admit, the single player experience on Age of Empires 2 is less down my street than the multiplayer. That's not saying it's not as up to par in terms of quality as the multiplayer, it's just my personal preference. But I can have fun with hours and hours on end in this multiplayer version of the game. The amount of time I've spent not only playing head to head with other players, but also teaming up with my friends and playing against the tough new AI system is not as easy as it sounds. They can really give you and your mates a run for your money. Along with this, the integration of the Steam Workshop brings mods in all aspects to the game. May it be a complete overhaul to the maps, new troops, different sound effects, further graphical improvements and even completely new game modes. Some of the mods are insane. With the open nature of Age of Empires 2 editor, it gives the players the opportunity to make crazy and wacky creations. From simple things like changing the voices to Donald Trump speeches, to the inclusion of a co-op MMO roleplay game where you can go around doing quests with your friends and upgrading your stats and character along the way. The possibilities are endless. Unfortunately, in terms of multiplayer, lag is a little bit of an issue. I haven't really dropped out of games on a regular basis so to speak, but every now and then connection will weaken a little bit, resulting in freezing of the game and longer times registering clicks, which when minor can be just a little bit of a hindrance at most, but when it is every few seconds, the significant pings make the game unplayable. So is this game worth your money? Coming in at around £15 or $23 on Steam, Age of Empires HD Edition is a great introduction to the franchise. Fairly polished, it gives players a great experience, may it be single player or multiplayer. Unfortunately, buying the original Age of Empires 2 on disc will have its restrictions, including not even being able to play on some operating systems, so personally I would not endorse buying the original Age of Empires 2. I mean, why wouldn't you buy the HD edition? You get everything you got in the original, you get updated graphics, better AI, and more content with updates coming out all the time, and that is not even talking about the mods. But the HD edition is definitely worth the small price tag that it offers at the moment on Steam. What do you think about the game? Would you recommend it to new players even to this day? Make sure you leave your thoughts down in the comments. But that is pretty much my opinions on Age of Empires 2 and whether it is worth it in 2017, 18 years after its initial release. Remember, the original Age of Empires is now getting a reworking that we should hopefully see sometime this year and I can't wait to play that and give you guys my thoughts on it when it is released. But until then, I will see you in the next one.